Hello, my name is Nestor Gonzalez. I'm a professor of neurosurgery and director of the Neurovascular Laboratory at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. It is really a pleasure to be here today with the Dr. Amru Sarash, who is professor of neurology at Case Western Reserve University, George M. Humphrey II, chair, endowed chair at the University Hospitals Neurological Institute and the principal investigator of the SELECT-2 multicenter clinical trial. It's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to be with you, Dr. Gonzalez, and I'm thankful to you and the American Heart Association for featuring this. Congratulations in your presentation at the ISC 2023. And could you please explain us briefly the main objectives of the SELECT-2 clinical trial? Um, uh, we all know that endovascular thrombectomy is safe and efficacious based on multiple randomized clinical trials, but those trials prove the safety and efficacy in patients with minimal ischemic changes. Those are with good aspects, uh, small core on uh, perfusion images, but th that resulted in an important subpopulation, which is those patients with large cores being underrepresented in these uh, trials, and those are the patients with uh, low aspects, large core on perfusion images, and we sought to evaluate endovascular thrombectomy safety and efficacy uh, uh, on uh, in, the, in, in patients with large ischemic cores, whether on non-contrast CT head or perfusion images. And that's um, as a as a background. This is a continuation of our work in the select trial, which was a prospective cohort phase two study, so to speak, where. We tested this in a, in a non-randomized fashion, so SELECT-2 is the randomized uh, phase three of the trial. Dr. Siraj, could you please tell us a little bit about the inclusion and exclusion criteria for this trial and how that impact the generalizability of the results for clinical practice? This is a, a, a fantastic question and, and um, uh, shed the light on an important uh, aspect or two of the trial. So in, in SELECT-2 uh, design, uh, we uh, included patients with large core on uh, multiple modalities, uh, those with simple images or non-contrast CT head based on the aspects, and those with perfusion images or diffusion images on CT perfusion or, or MRI, which um, uh, allows for uh, generalizability, as you mentioned. So um, if uh, people's practice are based, based on uh, CT, they, 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 they wouldn't say, well, this is too foreign to me. I do not use perfusion images. Uh, so this is within their practice. And, and similarly, if somebody is using perfusion, um, they would um, be able to, uh, you know, um, interpret the results within, within, within their practice, measuring the, 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 the uh, core based on the volume. Um, of course, there are further considerations in terms of concordance and discordance between the CT and perfusion and heterogeneity of treatment effect and likelihood of achieving functional independence or good outcome or independent population as volume increased. And you might argue and this is an endless debate between um, um, non-contrast CT and, and then advanced imaging and the need for them and the further information that they would provide. And we will look into this in future papers, but uh, uh, beyond the main result paper. But most importantly, we uh, we have included patients on the different imaging modalities representing different practices, uh, which um, allows for wide generalizability, as, as, as you mentioned. The other important aspects that represent generalizability is that the trial was run in, in multiple uh, countries uh, this is not a, a just a United States only trial. The trial uh, included sites in the United States and uh, North America and Canada. It also included sites in uh, Europe, in uh, Barcelona and uh, in, in Spain, um, and in Sw uh, Switzerland, as well as uh, several sites in um, Australia and New Zealand. So the the results are a presentation of multiple populations, multiple ethnicities. Uh, which allows for uh, uh, larger uh, generalizability as compared to trials that uh, were done in, in a single country. Excellent. And could you please tell us about the results of the trial, the, the, the main uh, effects and, and results in the primary endpoints and safety endpoints? Sure. So we included patients based on non-contrast CT head 
uh, who had um, an aspect of three to five. Um, and we included patients on based on perfusion images having a core volume of 50 cc or more, whether a CT perfusion or, or an onemar diffusion. Um, and um, th th this is the criteria. I think if I get more into the overlap between the two and all of that, I might say I might say this in the result. Okay. So uh, in this clinical trial, patients with large core strokes were included, and you included patients both uh, with, with two modalities of imaging, with the aspects that is based on non-contrast CT scans and also with perfusion images. Is that correct? Very good. And uh, the impact that that has in the generalizability, would you like to elaborate on that? So if, if, if someone's practice is based on uh, CT, non-contrast CT head, you may not say, well, um, I, I have not been using perfusion images in my practice, and I'm not able to uh, apply uh, this if we use just perfusion images and vice versa. If somebody's practice is on perfusion, we say, well, I usually do not use the aspects. And, you know, there's an ongoing and, and, and you know, endless debate about which imaging modality uh, we should use. So we, we were able to evaluate by uh, the, the different imaging modalities. Now, uh, the degree of the heterogeneity and the treatment effect and whether um, uh, may argue that aspects um, uh, use a semi-quantitative assessment while perfusion use a, a quant uh, quantitative and continuous volumes. Th th these differences we'll, 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 we'll look further into. Uh, but overall, we were able to give an assessment on non-contrast CT or uh, perfusion. Yes, I think we, we all recognize that the management of acute stroke has several barriers, and one of those have been the volume of the strokes. So we are really excited to hear from you the results of your trial. The overall enrollment target of the trial was 560 patients. And after a review of the outcomes of the first 300 enrolled patients by the Data and Safety uh, Monitoring Board as an interim analysis, they recommended uh, halting the trial uh, and, and terminating it uh, uh, due to uh, the, the findings uh, showing that the pre-specified boundaries were crossed. Those boundaries that suggest that endovascular thrombectomy is superior to uh, best medical management, including uh, thrombolysis. And by the time we stopped the trial uh, on the same day of uh, the recommendation, we had 352 patients enrolled. 178 patients went to thrombectomy, and they all received thrombectomy while 174 patients went to medical management with two crossovers. The main um, uh, analysis was the intention to treat analysis. And, and that analysis uh, showed uh, as a, for, the, for the primary outcome, which is the shift, a 60% uh, 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 likelihood based on the superiority, Wilkinson Mann Whitney test of superiority, 60% uh, a superiority likelihood of a patient receiving thrombectomy to achieve at least one point improvement on the modified ranking scale and uh, translated to the general uh, odd ratios uh, of 1.5. So a patient who received thrombectomy has 1.5 the likelihood of uh, achieving at least one point improvement on the modified ranking scale as compared to best medical management. And that's a number needed to treat of five patients. So you need to treat five patients, arch core with thrombectomy, for one patient to improve at least one point on the multiplied crackings. Uh, uh, and and uh, there are other important outcomes like uh, that we uh, we care about in our practice. What, uh, what, what is the percentage of patients who achieved functional independence of multiplied crackings of CO2? Uh, in thrombectomy, um, and they were higher as, as compared to medical management, 20% as compared to 7%. And as you know, this is a large core population, which is sicker patients as compared to the small core population where you have your 50% or 60% good outcome rate. Uh, here, we only found 20%, uh, but it's compared to 7% in medical management. And also, this was statistically significant and translated to a number needed to treat of seven. You treat seven patients with large core for one patient to achieve 
a function of uh, independence outcome. Another important outcome in this population is the uh, ability to uh, ambulate independently. If you have a patient with large vessel occlusion and large core, a core volume, uh, more than 100, um, achieving functional independence may not be uh, common, I wouldn't say uh, not realistic, but may not be common. So um, having uh, the, the ability to end up with walking independently, an MRS of three is not, a, it's, I would say, is considerable, considered reasonable outcome. Um, so we found that uh, the thrombectomy doubled uh, the uh, likelihood of achieving uh, uh, MRS of 0 to 3, uh, 38% with thrombectomy as compared to 18% with medical management. And that's a number needed to treat a 5, which is a very good number as well. The other part of, of, of this intervention uh, when, when we're doing, in doing it, especially in patients with large pore, is, is it safe? So it's a fake, it improves the outcomes. It improves uh, the, the, the outcome as a shift. It improves the outcome as functional independence and independent population, but is it safe? And uh, there is plausible uh, concern for risk of hemorrhagic transformation, specifically symptomatic hemorrhage. In, in select two, uh, symptomatic hemorrhage rates were, in, uh, were low and frequent and were not increased with thrombectomy. Mortality was reduced with thrombectomy, no, than a clip, but it was not statistically significant. Uh, so overall, uh, uh, reassuring uh, findings in terms of uh, safety outcomes and, 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 and very exciting findings in terms of improving functional independence, uh, independent population and overall uh, functional. Yes, this is certainly a very reassuring result to have a uh, improvement in the functional outcomes, a very good safety profile. And I, I think one of the most interesting aspects of the design of SELECT2 was the inclusion of several uh, PE-specified subgroup analysis, uh, which come to resolve questions that we have about what is really a large core, uh, what is the magnitude of that. Could you please comment uh, on the results of those subgroup analyses and the impact that that has also uh, for the trial? That's a fantastic question. And then, you know, I'm a you establish uh, that this treatment is effective and it's safe. And then you say, well, how large is large? Um, is there a, a uh, limit that I should put in my uh, you know, daily clinical practice? So that's why we pre-specified uh, looking at patients with more than 70 uh, cc, looking at patients with more than 100, and looking at patients with more than 150 because we did not want to put everybody in the same cupboard. Um, and um, we found that uh, in, in those with more than 70 cc's in BAPE, they accounted for two-thirds of the patients. In those more than 100 cc, they accounted for one-third of the patients in home. And more than 150, which is 15% of the patients, in a very good proportion that in the vast part of lumbectomy maintain uh, achieving better outcomes as compared to best medical management, which is also very encouraging. Um, of course, um, as you may expect, as the volumes increased, the likelihood of achieving a modus of zero to two decreased, but the, the outcomes in many management also were worse. So um, some vaccine maintained its treatment effect uh, in, in those populations. Additionally, uh, we, we uh, looked at uh, two important subgroups excluding patients with good aspects. As one, so one might argue that in the early windows, uh, the Hermes trial showed that a patient with an aspect of 6 to 10 is uh, thrombectomy is, is efficacious, and we excluded patients with a volume between 50 and 70 cc's because uh, in the late window, because they may overlap with the disuse 3 cri uh, the trial criteria. Um, and thrombectomy maintained its treatment effect and outcomes in the, the most uh, stringent Population when you take large core on both CT and um, perfusion images, those with low aspects and not all and large core on perfusion images, convectomy maintained its treatment effect, similar outcomes, similar treatment effect, almost one and a half uh, folds the likelihood of achieving better outcome as compared to uh, medical management. So, if you were going to synthesize, what is the main lesson? that we have learned with this trial and 
this comes to add to other trials, also exploring the role of endovascular interventions in large core strokes, which would say, would you say is the main message that we get from this research? Sure. I think our findings uh, show that without a doubt in, in an unequivocal um, um, large calls more than more than 100, more than 150, that endovascular thrombectomy uh, is to safe and is efficacious, uh, will increase the likelihood of patients improving. Uh, maybe not all of the patients would improve, but, but this is what, what, we, what we do in medicine. About when we test a treatment, it's evidence based, and we will apply it to the to the masses in the of the of the population and of the patients and um, um, achieve better outcomes in the in the in the, in the, in the overall. So, I want I would hope that the field would would embrace these these results and uh, will will help more patients being treated and more patients achieving um, better outcomes, which is you know, a, a great day for. Um, show field and a great day for uh, our patients and we, we are extending the hope to a population that was largely untreated now to be treated and I measure around the hope uh, that we see the, these results on a larger scale. Well, congratulations again. This is certainly a very important contribution to move the frontiers of our treatment of acute stroke and uh, congratulations for uh, the completion of the trial and your presentation in IFC 2023. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you again for having me and uh, for the kind words, and uh, congratulations to all of my co-investigators, uh, the, the select two investigators and all of our teams um, in all of our 31 sites. I mean, this this trial was in, in North America, Europe, um, New Zealand, and Australia, and this is all of their, their great uh, effort, and I'm... Um, um, happy to share the, the results in the, in the AHA. Thank you so much.